back, it's Bumbleberry, and this time we're going to go for the young man who's interested in our business, Andrew. Let's see if he has any secret powers. I doubt Honey, it, but still, like maybe. Or he'll someone. have a stuffed animal, which is this also good. This kind gentleman is the son of the vice chairman. He looks so mashed potatoes, as somebody said. That basically means that he looks generic, plain, nice comfort type person. <laughs> they call it comfort food like mashed potatoes. When my mother, was a man who looked only a couple of years older than me, he smiled and held Hi, out his hand. I'm to Andrew me. Lewis. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Anderson. Place your hand in his. As I placed my hand in his, he raised it to his lips and kissed over my knuckles. I felt my face burn slightly at the gesture. Andrew smiled at me before releasing my hand. I'm honored to be invited here. My mother smiled at both of us, which made me slightly concerned. Why was she excited to introduce me to Andrew? So, um, you organized this party very well, Miss Anderson. Thank you. You're welcome. Praise is very much deserved. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. I'm sorry if I seem a little forward. <laughs> I've just been excited to meet Harold Anderson's granddaughter. Huh? Why? I used to talk about you all the time in the office on how you helped him refine his toys. I only attended meetings and heard all of the stories. You've helped a lot with the success of the company without having to actually work there. <laughs> having to. Oh wow, I didn't know he talked about me. That would explain everyone's fascination with me and their rather personal questions. My dress is really nice. Okay, I looked to Andrew, who had a kind face to me. Something about him seemed off, and I didn't know what it was. He seemed to be hiding something. Whether it was good or bad, I was not able to find out. I felt someone walk up beside me, causing me to turn to them. Next to me was my dad, giving his cold stare to Andrew, who suddenly became tense. So, you're Jared's son. Andrew's body touched slightly. Whether it was fear or insult, Andrew locked eyes with my father. I couldn't help but feel the tension between them. It irked me how fragile the air had become, enough to break at the wrong word. You're the one who wants to be the next CEO of the Anderson Company. Well... Andrew, this guy wanted to take my grandfather's place as CEO? I thought the vice chairman wanted the position. David, leave the poor boy alone. I'm merely testing the boy's <laughs> conversational Mom's skills. face is perfect. Nothing wrong with that. Of course not, sir. And polite as well. Interesting. If you'll excuse me. Quickly, Andrew retreated away from my family into the crowd of people. Let's follow him. I quickly followed Andrew, wanting to be sure he was all right. I felt a little embarrassed that my dad put him on the spot like that. I had to apologize. We wound up outside. The stars practically danced on the grass as we stood in the backyard of the mansion. It had been my first time in years being out there, but my thoughts weren't on the nostalgia. Hey, Andrew? Andrew turned to me in surprise. However, his face was completely red in both embarrassment and humiliation. I felt terrible. Oh, I, um, I didn't see you or hear you following. Sorry. No, no, it's fine. I should be the one to apologize. What for? You didn't do anything wrong. I mean, for the way my dad behaved. He shouldn't have been so. Oh, no. No, it's fine. I mean, I should have expected it and been more prepared. <laughs> it was kind of a funny laugh. Andrew rubbed the back of his neck and gave a goofy grin. It was intriguing seeing Andrew's professional side and then seeing that goofy smile away from everyone. Still, I'm sorry for that. It's not a problem, really, but thank you. We both smiled at each other before I reached my hand out to him. He tilted his head and raised an eyebrow in confusion. Mika. My name is Mika. In understanding, he, his smile returned before he took my hand gently and shook it. That's a pretty name. I'm happy to know it now. <laughs> nah, it's not that nice. I have to disagree with you. It's much better than Andrew. I mean, who names their kid Andrew? A lot of people do. But how about Axel or Ace? <laughs> Something cool like that. I couldn't help but laugh at him. He was pretty chill for a guy who was supposed to be a vice chairman's son. He grinned and laughed along with me. I don't know why, but I felt warm. 
Whether it was the almost non-existent breeze or the situation we found ourselves in, it felt nice. What if he's a secret Lewis. succubus? Oops. Just like that, the feeling had vanished. We both turned to see my dad at the doors of the mansion, staring at Andrew with almost a deadly glare. Andrew straightened up, trying to maintain a business posture. His face is like, oh God, don't eat me. Yes, yes sir. Oh. Your limo is in the front. The driver has requested that you return home. Now. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Andrew quickly nodded to me before speeding back into the mansion to leave. As I took a step to follow, my dad stepped in front of me. Dad? I don't want to hear it. Do not become friendly with him. He wants to take the company away from us. You have no reason to be friends with him. Before I could retort, my dad turned away and walked back inside, muttering about how the party was nearing an end. I sighed and entered the house as well, waiting for the party to end immediately. Eventually, only Suzu, Naomi, my parents, and the incubi were left. My dad suddenly walked over and placed a hand on my shoulder with a smile. I stared up at him, a wave of confusion washing over my face. What? You did good tonight. I'm proud. Oh, thank you, Dad. Keep it up, and you'll be a good CEO. What? Hmm. It was Sunday, and I felt the need to see my grandfather. It had been three days since he had been buried, and the cemetery was only a short walk away. I decided to see him. I took my time eating and came back to the street to walk towards the cemetery. It was a good half hour walk, but it would be a nice stroll. Flower shop was on the way, so I could pick flowers for his grave. I still felt the sting of grief run through my bones, but I knew that it would eventually fade over time. I paused my journey to the cemetery to enter the flower shop, quickly picking a bouquet from the back display case and paying. The bouquet of lilies, please. Thank you. The flowers in hand, I made my way to the large steel gates of St. Joseph Cemetery. I entered and felt the cold shiver of death run along the air against my skin. Would it always be like this? The cemetery was a final resting place. It wasn't just for mourning or sadness. It was also supposed to be a place for remembrance. I sighed as I walked through the cemetery towards my grandfather's grave. Before I could reach it, though, I noticed a figure standing by the slab. Huh? Who is that? I stopped walking and tried to focus on my sight to see who was standing at my grandfather's grave before I approached. I didn't want to interrupt a prayer or anything, but even more, I wanted to know who was there. My mind barely considered the idea that it was my father, but it couldn't have been him. Familiar brown hair crowned the person's head instead of the black and gray my father had. He was vaguely familiar. Andrew? Potatoes! It was indeed Andrew. He was dressed in his casual clothes, but he was giving his respects to my grandfather. I was curious as to why. I quietly stepped closer and approached Andrew in the grave, being careful not to scare him. At my footsteps, Andrew turned to see me, and then realizing it was me, turned fully. Do you like that? What is that sentence? That's oh, Miss Anderson. I, uh, I'm sorry. I'll just... Andrew quickly shook his head and took a step to leave. You're fine, Andrew. I stopped him with a hand and smiled. He was merely paying his respects. There was no need for me to intrude. Andrew stared at me before smiling and nodding, returning to his place in front of the grave. He took a side step to make room for me, so I stepped next to him. I looked to the grave, running my gaze through the engraving in the stone slab before gently laying the bouquet down by it. However, I didn't stand back up. I gently sat down on the grass in front of the grave and stared at it. Lilies? Common flowers for gravestones, yeah. My grandfather didn't have a favorite flower. I heard and felt Andrew gently crouch down and sit beside me. I turned my head to look at him, catching him nodding in acknowledgement to my statement. I turned back to the grave, letting out a small smile. So, can I ask why I you came, came here? I came to pay my respects. He was someone I really idolized. I turned my head to him again, confused. Idolized? Mm -hmm. He inspired me to work hard and make people happy. When I interned for his company, he was the first person to greet me at the doors with open arms, even before my father. A lot of daddy issues in this game. I almost couldn't believe what I was hearing. 
However, in the look in Andrew's eyes make my heart break. He truly did idolize my grandfather like he was his own grandfather. Your grandfather was an amazing man. But I'm sure I don't have to tell you that. He treated me better than my dad ever could. All my dad cares about is me becoming the CEO. But Harold Anderson? No. I could practically feel my lips moving in sync with Andrew's as he continued to speak, almost hearing my grandfather speak along him in the air. That's he said, weird. don't worry about it so much. You have plenty of time to decide. Besides, you should do what makes you happy instead. He said that to me, too. Andrew turned to me in surprise before smiling. Really? <laughs> he cared a lot about you. There were days that he wouldn't stop talking about you and compared you to me. I felt a blush run across my face. What things did he say? Well, he told me how cute you were and how <gasps> you loved to make people happy. He also said you always had the perfect ideas for his toys. I felt a smile grow on my face, remembering the small moment when I had helped him design his now most popular toy, the glowing heart bear. I didn't realize how proud of me he was because I was so small, but now that I was older, I was able to understand that I am a genius and I come up with beautiful teddy bears and they are so fluffy and wonderful. And, um, hi, Andrew, you look different from this angle for some reason. He has always had me to help him, even when I didn't feel like I could. He was the greatest person ever in my life. He treated me better than my How dad. How does your dad treat you? He's pretty harsh to me. He wants me to be the CEO of the company as well, since it's technically a family business. Ah, uh, he's strict, like my dad. Well, if it ever came to a time where the board had to decide a CEO, I'd gladly give it up for you. <laughs> Can I get that in writing, please? And in cupcakes? I couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. Didn't he want the position? Why, don't you want to be CEO? To my surprise, Andrew shook his head with a goofy smile. I don't. My dad wants me to take over the Anderson Company, but I really am not sure if I want to or not. Sure, making toys is great and helping people is something I want to do, but I don't know if I want to head the company. You're not sure what you want to do, just like me. You don't want to be a CEO either? I shook my head. Andrew let out a small laugh. Man, we must be the worst kids on the planet. Our dads want us to take over a company, but we don't even want to. Imagine what would happen if they actually liked each other. I couldn't help but laugh with him. We were in the same boat, yet we were on opposing sides. It was like Romeo versus Juliet. Two families competing for one goal, but the competitors didn't even want to try to reach it. Andrew gently stopped laughing and smiled at me. Your grandfather was right about one thing, though. You are really cute. Eee, and I did not miss that Romeo and Juliet reference. Love interest. The blush that had faded away from my face suddenly returned at his words. I looked away from him, making him laugh again. Sorry, it's true. Cross my heart. Thanks. He was flattering me. I had to admit he was cute too, but I had only known him for a short while, and I had a house full of succubi, and they- or no, incubi? What are they? They're incubi. I'm sorry. I apologize. You know what I meant. Um, it wasn't realistic to like him more than that. Andrew cleared his throat and sat up straight, rubbing the back of his neck. I'll let you have some time with your grandfather. I don't have anywhere to be, so I'll wait by the gates and give you a ride home when you're done. <laughs> Go home, I hate you. No, I'm just kidding. Thank you. It was very sweet of him to wait for me, so I accepted his ride home. Andrew smiled before heading back to the gates. I remained with my grandfather. I'm sure you're laughing where you are, Grandpa. I practically glared at the grave, but after a brief second, I smiled. He's a sweet guy, and he's a big fan of yours. Who <laughs> wouldn't be? You cared for everyone, no matter who they were. I gently ran a finger over one of the lilies in the bouquet. It was soft to touch, but my mind was filled with Andrew for some reason. Was this grandfather's plan? Did he hope for me to meet Andrew as a kindred spirit? I wouldn't be surprised. I chuckled softly before standing. I'll be fine, Grandpa. Andrew's a good guy, but who knows? I shrugged before letting out a sigh and turning back to the cemetery gate where Andrew awaited me.
his car and drove me home. I went to my room and remained there until dinner. The remainder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Da-da-da! Let's go. Hey, I know you have school today, but do you want to hang out after? I couldn't help a small smile from growing on my face. Andrew was sweet and seemed like a good guy. I remembered how he gave me his number as he dropped me off at home from the, my visit to Grandfather's grave, making my smile my small smile bigger. I chuckled and texted back. Sorry, have to study. Sure, why not? I made myself some quick toast and coffee, needing a jump start. I felt drained and I did not want to fall asleep in class. Thank you for that update. Something bothered me, though. My house felt empty, or at least emptier than when I came for some reason. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it slightly bothered me. I need my incubi just sitting in the corner, hitting each other, playing games, making me stuffed animals. Please, thank you. Okay, bye. I finished my food and quickly rushed to the front, waiting for Naomi's car and confident nothing was going to happen. I avoided talking about what happened yesterday. I'll be riding with you guys from now on to and from school. As we entered the school, we quickly gathered our things from lockers and headed to class. There were no events to my surprise. Naomi and Suzu took their seats around me. Suzu in front of me, Naomi beside me, before the class bell rang and the class was greeted by our teacher. History wasn't as boring as economics, but I still managed to space out in that class just the same. I decided to keep my eyes to my notebook. I began to scribble random doodles, some of which stuck out to me more than others. I somehow managed to doodle a small bear with a heart on its stomach. I cracked a small smile at the image, imagining the heart lighting up on my paper as I pressed the eraser of my pencil on it. It's like the bear that she created with Grandpapa. Remember what had happened last week, slowly frowning at the memories of my grandfather. I guess it was still hard to let him go. To lose someone is never easy, but I knew that moping and letting his memory get to me wouldn't do any good. I felt, though, that he was watching over me. As stupid as that may sound, I felt that I was somehow safe, like it was okay not to focus on school or my future and just live in my own little world. I could be a little girl and draw pictures instead of plan out the rest of my life and be perfectly happy. Sadly, I knew that wasn't realistic. Graduation was slowly coming up and my mind wandered to the future once again. What was I going to do? I understand, I understand, I understand. I understand. I understand. Make videos, videos, videos on YouTube. On YouTube. <laughs> it was hard, it was hard to think about. At this rate, this rate I just wanted to wing it. No decisions, no decisions had to be made ahead of time in my little world. No disappointments would come out whenever I decided with whatever I decided to do. Hey, maybe I could find perfect magical love in my little world and life would turn out just like a dream. It was sad to think that that world wasn't real, yet my heart still wished that it was. I gently squeezed inside my chest, almost convincing me that magic could be real. My mind knew better. I let out a small sigh, letting the world hide away inside my thoughts as the class bell rang. Naomi and Suzu smiled at me, making me feel a little better. At least I still had my friends. I quickly gathered my things and left to my next class. Ugh. Sorry. I'm trying to stretch. It hurts. Okay. Um, throughout the day, I found myself wondering about my future. What was I going to do? How was I going to do it? Everything. Then Andrew came to mind. He and I were in the same position. We were both in line to take the CEO position, but neither of us wanted it. How is it adorable to think about? Is it adorable to think about? No. No, it's not cute. A strange Romeo and Juliet. Hey, are you listening? No. <laughs> I broke out of my thoughts, finding myself in the hall with my things, ready to head home. Aboa? Dude, you've been spacing out all day. Are you okay? What's the problem with spacing out? I'm fine. It's nothing? Yeah, I'm fine. As I expected, Naomi and Suzu gave me disapproving looks. Suzu looks mad. What's going <laughs> on, Anderson? We're just worried about you. It's nothing, really. It's. Before I could continue, I heard Lizette's gaggle of girls giggling nearby. 
I prepped myself, ready to fight Lisette or deal with another attack from her girly army before turning to the sound. I felt my face go red at the sight. He's getting a couple bonus points now. Andrew was standing in the hall, smiling at me. The girls around him seemed flirtatious, but he only kept his eyes on me. It wasn't like he was holding flowers, but his older looks made him the cutie of the school hall. <laughs> I will be honest, he was much more handsome than any guy in the school. Andrew, hi. Hey, I was waiting outside for you, but I needed to use the restroom. I hope you don't mind me coming into your school for that, right? That is so awkward. Look at Naomi and Suzu's faces. <laughs> Not at all. Andrew smiled. Why would you mind if someone came in to use the bathroom? Unless they're like Uncle Buck or something. Ten points if you get that reference. Andrew smiled at me before gesturing to my friends, who both practically had their jaws hitting the floor. And who are your friends? Oh, this is Naomi and Suzu. Pleasure. Yo. <laughs> They looked at me, giving me their silent friendship, oh my gosh, who is the hot guy and how do you know him look? I glared for half a second at each of them before smiling to Andrew. So you came to pick me up? Yeah, I figured I could drive you from school to wherever, you know? Save some time and stuff. Unless you don't wanna. No, it's cool. Just give me a couple seconds, alright? For sure. I'll be outside. Andrew smiled and gave a two-fingered salute to me before heading out of the hall. The girls, like a gaggle of morons, followed. As I looked to Naomi and Suzu, they glared at me. <laughs> what? How do you know that guy? When did you two meet? I know you're jealous. Don't worry. You've been Don't hogging worry. guys to yourself. Oh, it's not like that, okay? We met at the house party. My mom introduced us and, well, he's kind of nice. Naomi and Suzu raised their eyebrows at me in almost perfect sync. I sighed. Look, we're just friends and he wanted to hang out, so I said yes, okay? It's just for today. It's nothing, really. Whatever you say, just remember to use rubber. <gasps> Suzu! You guys! <laughs> their evil faces are kind of funny. Before I could defend myself, Lizette strutted up to me, crossing her arms. So, who was that? A college boy? Back off, Lisette. I'm really not in the mood to hear your voice right now, and neither is Anderson. I just wanted to know. Can a girl be curious? You can get your big nose out of my business. Be curious, but don't pry. I could feel something go sour. Something wasn't right. Why was Lisette approaching us? She wasn't the type to talk to us freely. She thinks your boyfriend is cute. I looked around to see a small gaggle of her girls gather, glaring at my friends and me and ready to pounce. I also noticed that Suzu, Naomi, and I were cornered. What do you want, Lizette? Well, Anderson, I'm getting a little tired of this game. For years now, we've been at each other's throats. Excuse me? Shut it, Capini. The point is, let's let go of the past, shall we? We're both different people, and we're gonna graduate soon. I don't want to graduate with bad blood between us. Almost like the cliché chick flick, Lizette held her hand out to me with a smile. Mmm, I better save, because I have a feeling she's going to ask me to set her up, and I will have to punch her in the nose. I don't know what that save is. I'm guessing I can oversave this one. I'll save over you. Sorry, Eric, I love you, bye! Was she joking? After all we had been through, she plotted with their girls to tease us, to make us miserable. She was the mastermind behind any operation against me. Years of her trying to undermine me because we both were at the top of her classes and she wanted to shake hands? This wasn't like her at all. I rushed my gaze over her, trying to see what was different. Was she just tricking me? Was she being held in some kind of knife point? My eyes landed on a small purple pencil sticking out of her pocket. For some reason it caught my eye. I knew something was up with it, but it was just a pencil. What could be up with a pencil? Um, hello? She's doing evil Diana magic. I snapped out of my trance and looked up at Lizette, who was glaring at me. Are you going to shake my hand, or what? No. There was no way I was going to forgive her so easily. No, Lizette. 
You've been a little bee to me ever since we were young. You've been underhanded and you've gathered a little girl gang to harass me and my friends ever since middle school. What makes you think I'd shake your hand? Lisette glared at me, rubbing the hand I had slapped. Listen, Anderson, I did all that to give you tough skin. Look at you now, standing up for yourself. And you think bullying me justifies that? My yelling caused Lisette, her gaggle of girls, and my friends to step away from me. Bullying me may have given me tough skin, but it also gave me scrapes and hard times in places I'm supposed to be learning in. You were seduced with this idea of making yourself the most powerful girl in school. The only ones holding you back from that were me and my friends because we didn't bow down to you and kiss your feet. <laughs> Sorry, how overzealous in my anger. I don't practice that part of my voice very often. Um... Mostly, you hated how I worked my butt off to get good grades, and you wanted me to topple over so I could cry and give up for your sick entertainment. I wanted to hit her. Oh, I wanted to. Don't worry, I'll hold her. I'll hold her arms. You can hit her. Just kidding. Don't hit people, people. After all the times she hurt me, she deserved to be on the floor. But I had a date to catch. I walked over and glared into Lizette's face, almost nose to nose with her. You're a bully, and you'll always be one. I'm not going to shake your hand. I'm going to forget that. With that, I left the stunned Lizette. My friends, equally annoyed, came right behind me. I continued down the hall with Naomi and Suzu right beside me. So, what about this guy? You're going on a date? It's just hanging out. So, we can come with, right? No way, Suzu. You have to babysit Francesca, and I have to go to a college interview. Who is Francesca? I turned and smiled at my friends. Trust me, I'll be fine. It's just hanging out. I'll text you guys both when I get home. Like a pair of adorable parents, Naomi and Suzu nodded before heading out, leaving me to head after Andrew. Okay, this episode's getting kind of long, so I'm going to end it here, and then we will resume our date with Andrew, a.k.a. Mashed Potatoes. So you'll be in for a delicious snack next time. Tell me what you think of him so far, and I hope you guys stay sweet and stay awesome. Bye!